assalamu alaikum dear students uh, welcome to our today lecture in our today lecture we shall be discussing about impulse response function uh, first of all we will discuss about that what is impulse response function basically uh, the impulse response function is a shock to a war system what does war mean vector auto regressive model or vector auto regressive system at as in our previous lecture we have already discussed about that how to apply war in our previous lecture we also discussed about the restricted war and unrestricted war which is also called vector array correction term vecm model but now we are is discussing about impulse response function and the second definition or explanation for the impulse response function is that impulse response identify the responsiveness of the dependent variable in the war system when a shock is put to the array term so basically in simply word we can say that impulse response function measures the change in dependent variable when we give a, any shock to the uh, array term and the third explanation for the impulse response function can be that a unit shock is applied to each variable and see its effects on the war system uh, basically in case of impulse response function we are giving shocks to any variable and we will see that how it will affect that particular variable or the dependent variable in some future time period so basically uh, it is a simply we can say that as you you can see that it is response so it means that what a dependent variable respond to any shock in the system when we given a shock to our any variable or any error term so when we give a shock to our error term or any variable so how would be the response of the dependent variable so now uh we will go to eviews and uh, we bring our data into eviews and we will apply the impulse response function and after that we will get results and uh, at the end we will see that how to interpret the result now i am going to eviews and uh, i will bring my data into eviews then i will apply impulse impulse response function to my data set so here is my data in excel sheet so from these variable i am going to take only data for the two for two variables so after that we will see that how uh, we can obtain result from these two variables you can take uh, as much as variables uh, you want to put into your model but now i am interesting only in two variables so this one is my first variable that is cpi or inflation and my second variable is gdp g that is gdp growth so i am going to select my this data set and now i will go to my eviews and i will go to file then on new work file and i have to uh, enter my start date which is 2000 and after that i have to enter my end date of the data so my data start date is year 2000 and my data end date is 2019 and in frequency you have to select that your data is multi year annual semi annual quarterly monthly bi monthly you have multiple option so you can check uh, any of these option depending upon the nature of your data set by but my data set is annually basing basis so i am going to Uh, go with the annual based data set so after this uh, you can uh, sele select here from structure unstructured balanced plan data in case of unstructured data it mean that your data have no start and end date dated data mean that you have uh, your data set have start and end date balanced panel data mean that you have multiple countries or multiple institution or multiple organization data so in my case i have only data for one country i have time series data so i am going with dated regular frequency so if you have time series data just go with this option and after that just click on okay and then go to quick 
and empty group and then uh, paste your data here which we have copied from your excel file so as you can see that my data is here in uh, eviews file so now you have to uh, select both of your variables and then click on uh, right click and open as uh, group so after this uh, go to this quick option and at the end here you can see that there is option of estimate var uh, you can simply click on this estimate var and in this window you have to write endogenous variable so I am assuming that my all variables are endogenous so you can also write uh, your R all variable as endogenous so endogenous mean that dependent variable so I am going with this option that my all variables are endogenous and lag interval for the endogenous you can select the lag period lag means that how much years you want to enter as lag that your data is depending on your some previous year so as you can see that my data set is only of 19 years so I am going with only two lags for my variables uh, but if you have a uh, large sample, sample size data or you have monthly or quarterly data you can go with multiple lags but uh, I have only data of 19 years so I am going with only two lags for my variables so after that just click on ok and this will gives you the result for your war model a vector auto, uh, vector auto regression estimate but we are interested in impulse response function so then go to this impulse option then click on this impulse and here you can see that uh, it is asking from you that what type of method uh, you are going to choose for your ordering so there are multiple options you can choose any of these method by your own choice but I am going with this Cholesky uh, deformation method that is well, well known and uh, more commonly used method for ordering the variable so I am going with this uh, Cholesky option and uh, then click on ok so uh, this will give you the uh, results for the impulse response function so now let's uh, interpret these results as you can see that first graph is showing uh, result for CPI to CPI innovations or uh, as you can see that uh, Cholesky decomposition or uh, it also shows that what will be effect of this variable to this variable when when standard deviation shock is given to the array term or to the any variable in the model so first graph tell us about that response of CPI to CPI in the beginning you can see that there is a uh, positive effect but this result is increasing at decreasing rate but after that uh, CPI to CPI inflation is still positive and it is increasing at increasing rate and this uh, numbers here 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 10 they are showing the future predic prediction that after one year there is relationship between CPI to CPI this one for example now uh, we are in year 2023 so after one year we are in 2000 we will be in 2024 and this will be 2025 this will be 2026 27 28 and so on as you can see that response of cpi to gdpg it means that when uh, there is a shock to gdpg or uh, then how much cpi will respond so you have to interpret the, this in a such a way that uh, any shock to this variable how much response will be given by this variable so in this equation you can consider that the first variable is your dependent and the second one variable is your independent variable or you can say that you are giving shock to this variable and you are checking the response that how this variable will respond when any shock given to this variable so as you can see that uh, 
in early three years, there is no response shown by CPI when there is shock given to GDP. But after that, uh, CPI is showing positive response when there is a shock given to GDP. Similarly, uh, this one is show that after one year results. So it means this result is for 2024, this result is for 2025, this result is for 26 and up to so on. And this result you can see that response of GDP to CPI inf innovation. So it means that when we given a shock to CPI, how GDP growth will respond it. So as you can see that after one year, uh, there is a negative relationship. So in year 2024, we can assume that any given shock to CPI will decrease the response, will decrease the GDP growth because it shows that there is a negative uh, impact on GDP growth when there is a shock given to uh, CPI inflation. And after five years, for example, let's say in 2028, there is uh, the GDP growth is not showing any response as it is zero. As you can see that uh, the values also predicting us that there is zero relationship at this moment between CPI and GDP growth. So it means when you are giving any shock to CPI, GDP growth is not responding to your shocks. And the last one result is for uh, GDP growth to GDP. So in the beginning, when you give any shock to GDP growth, the GDP uh, decreases and then it will become negative and after that it will go smoothly on a zero pattern. So when you give any shock to GDP, in the beginning GDP responses negatively as you can see that this uh, the curve is showing a declining trend so it means the GDP is de decreasing when there is any shock given to GDP innovation. So in this way you can interpret the result of impulse response function and here are the options that you can select multiple graphs you can see the values in table form as well and you can see the combined graph as well. So the first graph is showing the response of CPI to innovations then response of GDP to innovation. So you can uh, interpret the result according to your own choice depending upon your model. So this is how we can run and interpret the impulse response function. So if you have any question, you can ask me.